Live from New Paltz. Live from New Paltz. It's, <laughs> it's Johnny Newman Seal. <laughs> All right. So I suppose we don't have a quorum today for the environmental policy board as of now. We I'll, I'll, I'll start the 15-minute, I guess, clock if you want to call it that for meetings. But um, we have some I don't know, things to go over and uh, just to keep things. Uh, Moving with the EPB as a coherent body and entity within the municipal, I don't know, bureaucracy that uh, will continue with the administrative business. But we can't approve the agenda, so we move on to public comment. None. <laughs> uh, so we kind of maybe think, so basically maybe I I kind of change things up a little bit. Added a tiny little homework assignment thing at the end, you know, just to. Yeah. Make sure you know we move things along and have a breakdown of projects that we're doing and responsibility, and also on the record timeline and when we do things or produce things. And I don't know, just so we all discuss our affairs and make sure the EPB is at least moving in on some way, shape, or form in terms of projects and ideas, and keeps it abreast of environmental things going on in New Paltz. I know it's the only place in the room that probably blocks you from being on the camera, so let's go All right. I know you're always welcome behind the table. I promise. I second it. Yeah. Well, well, wait, it's at the press conference that the president does. All camera. <laughs> Those are some bad hombres. All right, you're on the record on that. Strike the record. Not that we can. All right. I'm having too that much fun. This, this is probably the most fun I've had. <laughs> So. But anyway, no, it's all right. <clears throat> Forgiven. We're all allowed to have a little bit of fun. But anyway, so we can't since we can't approve the minutes. Well, yeah, we can't approve the minutes either. Um, I guess administrative stuff. Any word on the business cards? Um, we kind of requested uh, informally. I don't know through the meeting uh, last month as to requesting business cards. I was wondering if you had an update. Um. Or should we contact the clerk? I don't have any update, but I'll ask. Okay. I'll um, I do know that a template has finally crossed. Um, oh wait, I actually received an email in the past. Okay. Desk, so, um, and I just saw that, so I feel like it'll be easy enough for us to just kind of get those done. Okay, perfect. And I forgot we did receive an email in the past month uh, from Alberta regarding the business cards, and then yeah. she never heard anything back. I just gotta make because sure she kind of handles it. Well, though. she was checking up our emails and everything. Yeah. I believe just make sure the contact information is up there. So yeah, thank you for that clarification. Um, yeah, and I'll be glad to steal the template from another board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So membership update. Well, uh, we received a news that uh, on the village board agenda tomorrow is uh, a membership um, inquiry by uh, a village resident, Susan Stesson Comb, and. Uh, She'll tell uh, the village board uh, why she wants to join the environmental policy board. And we're always open to new people in uh, either alternate roles or researcher roles or uh, in terms of bringing people on, you know, just to add manpower to our organization or entity. So I look forward to hearing about that tomorrow. Um, I won't be uh, available for the meeting. But uh, Don, if you could just slip me a note or slip everyone in the EPB a note about what she says, that'd be great. Well, if I think if you're, if who's here is comfortable with uh, having her appointed as an alternate, where she could count for quorum and, and also vote. Yes. If we were light on a meeting, that would probably you know solve some definitely. chronic issues we've been having. Yeah, definitely. Like today. <laughs> so. Well, oh well, great. That is. My daughter's home from uh, school. And I just Randomly we'll, grab a stack of papers. We'll <laughs> All right. Yeah, we gotta be really so brief. it's uh, 7.42 and we're officially a meeting. All right. All right. Back back to the top, I guess. So I guess, Rachel, if you want a copy of the agenda. Um, so I don't know if you took a look at the agenda over the weekend, but if you haven't, uh, it's so we have a vote for the agenda? We have enough for the vote? Or do we, are we in need of one more person? I mean, 
you're good. You're good. Okay. You're All right. So it has to be unanimous. Okay. It has to be unanimous. Okay. Well, who, we approve the agenda. Say aye. aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. Great. No public comment. I guess announcements. We'll get to the news later. Um, we'll get back to where I was before Rachel had walked in. So, main meeting. I just talked about the um, stuff we've been working on, and uh, I don't know bringing something to the table every meeting, which you evidently have, and we'll get to that later. So, uh, business cards are in the works. Uh, you received that email over the past month regarding the information on the business cards from Alberta. Uh, I don't know if I responded. responded. Okay, that's fine because uh, I think you did I get it. But as long as you got it, the content information is correct. So. Yeah, as long <laughs> as it's got my new phone number on it. Yeah. All right. And then membership update. So uh, there's this uh, woman, a village resident, who wants to join uh, Susan Stesson Cone. Oh, okay. You may know her. I'm not sure. I, I, I know who that is. Okay. I'm not sure. I'll well, she, she's on the village board agenda for tomorrow night. So uh, we're, uh, I actually, uh, so as a quorum, we voice our support for the alternate member on the record. If you okay, want. If we were short a person and, and she oh, would be a quorum and she would I vote. totally agree with that. Yes. Okay, great. So, business agenda. Well, budget got approved, and so the next steps are to get the Riverkeeper talk off the ground to get the paint swap supplies, and now we have the ability to get that by submitting an invoice to the village clerk and treasurer. Yep. Okay. And Nancy at Village of Newport still on. Okay, Nancy, okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Nancy, yeah, the village treasurer. Yes. And um, basically, I guess, Greston, if you want to put that together, mm -hmm. or um, that might be a, a nice item for you to work on in the past yeah. next month to get that, uh, the items out. I basically outlined the specifics of the items within the spreadsheet I sent out uh, okay. at the end of May. And that spreadsheet contains all the, the pricing and the exact items. We just have to upload pictures and documents and we'll talk about that project. Or like the, the uh, designs and everything. Okay. We'll get that, that later on. So that's good that we have uh, the ability to do that. So we'll make some progress on the uh, paint swap supplies and be able to uh, support that Riverkeeper uh, discussion or uh, Watershed Alliance. Um, the, um, I don't know if you've made any progress or if anyone's been talking to Riverkeeper in the past month, but I can put that as a homework item to uh, dwell on. I did find a map that I wanted to, but I'm not sure where it is right now, but I found a map I wanted to use for that. So do you want to have Riverkeeper do something for this board or for the community? Uh, well, I that idea was floated around. Uh, that's still to be determined. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'd rather have the whole community involved, but the EPB would sponsor it just so that members of the community would benefit and not just us. Mm -hmm. But if there were to be, you know, a symposium or a conference or, you know, a, a training of sorts, and we all voted as a quorum to support that, then I would see that as a feasible option too. They're, they're open to any suggestions. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, all right. That that's going to be a top idea because we, we have money to spend and we need ideas. I'd like to walk the trip. Walk the trip. But we'll do, get do, a, do a field get trip. Get boots on. Get a, do a field trip. Get boots on. Walk the trip. Walk the whole thing. And talk about it. Um. Where it's coming from. Where it's going. What's going on around it. Uh huh. But would, why, what would we have to, I guess we'll pay for the transportation, but do we have to necessarily pay for, uh... Well, the person from, uh... uh I guess. I, I just don't know if they have curators like that or, you know. Come on. You can ask. Do you want me to ask? I can call them. Okay. Yeah. That'd be I'll great. That. That'll be my thing. I'll call, I'll call them and see what they can do for us. I'll do yeah, that exactly. For, I'll do that for next month. Okay, great. Figure something out. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, on that note... So, so for next year, I guess we we could focus on getting this first Riverkeeper talk off the ground. And if it's a success, it could be a potential other budget item for next year, and maybe expanding it, maybe involving the planning board with some, you know, 
stormwater but management training or something like that where DEC you know shows us new grants available or the opportunities or uh, availabilities of certain resources for us to use in conjunction with the CSO and consent order and getting rid of the MS4 designation but for now we'll take what we can get. So on to the Millbrook Preserve. Um, so do you, so you had some updates over the month about Millbrook, right? Yeah, uh, well, it was an ongoing discussion and negotiation went on for quite a while, well over a year. Um, and the village board did pass recently uh, the conservation easement. So I think there's a, one remaining legal issue the lawyers are still talking about, but the document has passed. It's a legal document. It's in force. Oh, uh, in force right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. What's it available the, for? Sure, yeah. The clerk, just the clerk's office would have a copy. Okay. I don't know whether it would be posted to the website until the lawyers have officially done all the final language. So it's not, it's not final right now. Um, it's legally, oh, yeah. it's legally it's, imposed, it's, it's but been passed subject yeah. to the lawyers working on an indemnification clause, which they have oh, already said that okay. they've already said they're right, in then. agreement with. In agreement in principle. <laughs> yeah. So what, what remains to be done is, is uh, things like the recreation plan, the size of the trails. Mm -hmm. That's that stuff that's still going to be uh, discussed. Indemnification is a dicey issue with recreational trails there. So take your time with it. But there is a <laughs> sort of the village. There is a conservation easement which in is in the process of being put in place. Is it, in, will be, is it going to be in perpetuity or for a, a fixed period of time? I think it's forever. Okay. It's not 99 years. Uh, no, it's forever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're well by the land trust. The land. Yeah. Okay. If, if it's the land trust, I trust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're very, they're a very good organization. I actually have a friend who works, who works there, who actually just got a full time job there. She started out as part time, but they actually brought on a full time. Uh, they're busy. Right? They're busy. Yeah. Yeah. But good for them. So uh, that's great news. Um, Rachel, did you have any other updates? Because you always hiked the mill group and. Yeah. Well, did, did you um, notice any new activity or uh, experimentation no, with any no. of the property owners? No. No? Uh, the well it's, it is unchanged. Uh, okay. There's, you know, the vegetation is growing back. Um, there were some uh, students that Julie had uh, that were had volunteered to clear up the campsite, but because of all the dense overgrowth, Uh, okay. uh, there was a couple with a baby that lived there for two years, so they didn't take any of their garbage out. So it's like Only a big plastic tarp and all kinds of like this stuff. But uh, it's just so heavily overgrown around. It's in the Doozy school property, like part of the uh, part of the park that's you know, part of that you know, behind Doozy school. But it's just in a it's just in a really I, it, we'll go back in the fall on the I just very much all right but, um, but yeah so um, i'm glad no new drilling or anything it's been no done without drilling. people on announcements they, they, they pulled up a lot of barberry like a lot of invasive species oh good good so and other community organizations are out there it's great yeah people there's always been volunteers that have just done stuff yeah like clip clip the I, I go back there and Well, I think that's why the village chose to enforce the conservation easement because we use that area so much. So, uh, props, yeah. props to the village board for uh, getting that done. Hopefully, in perpetuity. <laughs> but, uh, all right, to plenty board news discussions. Uh, I guess I, guess I kind of screwed up that one bullet. I should have been out more, but it's that whole outlier for the, <laughs> the following items. But um, so for the green infrastructure steering committee, the well, I have one thing on the, on the planning board. It's not. not well, um, I, was, oh, I, don't know, I, well I, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. So actually, yeah, talk. <laughs> well, there's something that isn't officially in front of the planning board yet, but people have been have gotten mailers about it. Uh, there's a new proposal for the pit by the uh, the group that was going to put in the hotel. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the, what? the mailers. Really? Yet. I did not. Um, People in town have. I, I don't. Whoa! I did not, not hear about that. Uh, there's going to be an information session in early July. Um, 
and th these mailers are coming from the developer. But um, the reason I know about this is someone asked by email the village board and the planning board whether there was something in front of the planning board, huh. and the response was no, not yet. But in that email, it was said that people had people had yeah. received uh, huh. received mailers. Interesting. With uh, you know, with a picture of a new development, and invitation. What's the session? Really, but you haven't seen the rendering. No, no. Huh. Word of mouth. Yeah, I wonder so which blocks they gave, like who they gave it to, because I mean, I live two blocks away. Rachel lives across the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, it's it's. it's uh, I know this board has a responsibility to comment on things in front of the planning board. It's not there yet, uh -huh. but I also know, just a couple months ago, you developed this, presented this really comprehensive analysis of that parcel yeah. uh, to the planning board. So I guess when it gets there, it gets there. we'll talk about it. I just want to give oh, you a heads up. Thank you. There's something apparently in the works. Okay, I didn't, that, that, that was not what I was talking about. It's so great. <laughs> that, that is uh, awesome. So, I mean, awesome in terms of, you know, something for us to get involved with, get invigorated about. So, I mean, that's great. I'm looking forward to seeing the proposal. I mean, I hope it's uh, a green, environmentally friendly development that ameliorates some stormwater issues that we have and uh, is conforms with the current, present, uh, landforms and bedrock and everything that is present in the pit parcel in my analysis and everything and by all means I mean I'm uh, intrigued about seeing that meeting and what time it is but I doubt I can attend but it should be interesting to see what, what people think about it because I, I mean I'm totally neutral at the development idea and I'm totally fine with you know a four-story building get you know, built there so long as the community supports it but I'm just interested in hearing the community perspectives beyond our little in the bubble EPB with our own perspectives and everything. Seeing what businesses want and what other residents think is appropriate. I mean, this property is not surrounded by residents much at all, so it's mainly, you know, businesses and I mean, there's a school right there. There's but, a school, there's a park right across the street from But, uh, all right, I'm just, so I'm just trying to say this is an awesome opportunity for the EPB to get involved at the very onset of the idea of the project. And this is the opportunity that I've kind of been looking for in terms of us getting a bigger scope and involvement way before the planning board. So I really appreciate that done. I guess we'll get to the details later. It's we're going to be hypothesizing hypotheticals. Yeah, and, and there's sure. nothing on the current planning board future agenda that's a couple of expansions of driveways and stuff. Nothing uh -huh. that would come yeah. to our attention. So. And yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, as long as it conform to Seeger and Land Use Law of New, New Paltz, New York, I mean, by all means, develop. So um, I guess we'll look forward to hearing more about that in the coming month. And uh, if anyone hears about that and us amongst us, um, we'd appreciate you forwarding any information on to the rest of us. We yeah, got there, there, there's probably a date somewhere in the email, I just don't know. Okay, yeah, cause I, I'm not entrenched in uh, local village politics. So, I'd appreciate the foot in the door there, Don. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, last time they had this, the whole, whole mock-up, you know. I'm sure there's a whole rest. Well, I'm sure there's a whole rendering, but let's let's see it when we see it and uh, save some time for the Green Infrastructure Committee update. So Dave Gilmore, and God bless his soul, he put together another spectacular request for proposal uh, regarding the contract ideas for the village of New Paltz bringing about a consulting firm to deal with the pre-planning and planning process for uh, determining a certain locations for certain projects with the grant money we received from the DEC and the Hudson River Estuary Program. And I love it. I mean, Dave is good at what he's doing, obviously, because he gets money. Like, I think that, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I can pass it around. Um, I don't know if it's been officially presented. I think it was presented last Thursday. I don't know if you follow that, Don, at all. The town board? No, but no the new, village of New Paltz, uh, uh, green, uh, Oh, we, I know they had a meeting. Yeah, they had a meeting last Thursday where I think Dave presented that RFP that he, I don't know if you got it, no? Um, well, I think they had a quorum issue. Oh. Uh, I had another meeting right uh, next door. Okay. But, uh, but they were working it forward. 
Yeah, because they, they've sent it around. It's a great document. I support all the constraints he wanted. Like they have to do, they have to have certain qualifications. They have to, you know, produce a certain document. And I think that they was the overarching goal and objectives were very pragmatic. So if you guys get the opportunity to read it in the next month, or if you'd like to read it, just shoot me an email. I'd like to see it. Yeah. All right. So. I'll email Dave and then get back to you guys. But that um, project should be underway hopefully by end of the fiscal year. So hopefully uh, so over the summer, I think, I think, I mean, don't uh, quote me on it, or actually quote me on this is on record. But, <laughs> but I think it was like the, I guess the open period for taking in our the proposals is due August or something like that, and I mean it's considerable grant money. It's in I think millions, if, or million and a half something like that. But that's in the long term with including everything. So part of this project is only you know five figures or something like this, and. Uh, I'll send that around, I guess, so you guys know what's going on. Don, would you like to talk to me? Um, I think I've or seen. We don't it. have enough time. <laughs> no, I think I've seen it on uh, as a village board member. Okay. Sure. All right. Good. And you approved it? Or well, we didn't vote on it, but oh, I, okay. I looked at it. Okay. But all good for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all right. Cool. Well, then, uh, Water Street Market Theater Site Plan Application. Well, uh, the village bo uh, planning board approved it uh, in terms of this theater development going. Uh, Behind uh, Seven Works Avenue, all right, on the record, it's my, my house, my property. <laughs> but uh, the, it's right from the Water Street parking lot, uh, where the elevated parking lot is, uh, down to where the water fountain is, and then through where part of the donut hut is, or the opposite side of the donut, so it's like the closing your dogs. And then all the way back to the end of the lot, and they're right uh, abutting the edge of my property. That whole thing is going to be like a theater, a uh, 60 seat uh, live theater uh, in the proposal. And they're removing mature trees on the slope. And I mean, they're replanting them. They have good green infrastructure ideas. So, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, dwell on this anymore. I just wanted to keep you guys updated. That's all. And I wish I had asked this question before the planning board approved it. So they're taking out the upper parking lot at Water Street. And so there's that, it's basically going to go there and the other parking lot? Well, yeah, and then up to like almost the top of like my fence. So I wonder if they, were, if they added extra parking. Well, the, well, the, that's, anyway, all, that's, that's, all, all, that's all in the minutes, yeah. That's a whole mess of yeah, yeah. the whole issue that, you know, caused the delays last time because the issue with parking, but that's not really an environmental yeah, policy yeah, board yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th that, yeah, don't open the uh, can of worms per se. Okay, sorry. No, 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 it's <laughs> fine, fine by me. And no, uh, I mean, they took a site visit, they went to my property, they went to the neighbor's properties, and they, they noticed, you know, the character of it. And the, I mean, I, we voiced our concerns about the, the physical issues with construction and the impact on the property surrounding that because I mean, these are, you know, 17, 1800 foundations that are very susceptible to vibration. And I mean, basically, I know we're also concerned about stormwater management and runoff and everything. So they seem to have a green infrastructure plan. So in terms of the environmental policy board's perspective, I think it, it would be a green building. I mean, I would just hope they aim for LEED certification, but they're high energy users because they're lights, heaters, stuff like that. And that could pose, you know, concerns if, you know, energy smart or, you know, different kind of standards aren't kind of emphasized in the planning process and construction process. But I guess that's more for the planning board, but just something I wanted to bring up. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, I mean, as long as, you know, the stormwater runoff is uh, mitigated, which it seems to be, then, we should have no problem uh, with the EPPs supporting the project so long as they go through, get approved the good secret process for this type of action, whether it's classified as type one, type two, or um, not listed. But I don't think it will be an unlisted action. <laughs> but who knows?
And on to the next thing. So, I guess uh, training and outreach for the Riverkeeper training. Um, Rachel will take that on as her homework. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. I don't know if you. Who should I reach out to? Dan Chan. Dan Chan. Yeah, you want to want a pen? Write that down. I like to tell Siri too. <laughs> but uh, all right, great. Well. And the number you have? No, I, I don't have it offhand. So it's the wall. It's well, Jason West is the Walco River Shed Alliance, which is a group we could partner up with. But what, no, what, what, what are we actually doing? Well, we, no, our agreement was with, was with Riverkeeper. Or with Riverkeeper. Or Riverkeeper. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm not sure if they're like an umbrella or whatever, separate. I know, I, you kept, I think you mixed them, I, you caused me to mix them up. They're both, they're, they're pretty close. Yeah. A lot of the same members. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically like a subsidiary of River Keeper for the wall kill. All right, well, that's great. So I guess uh, for my uh, undeveloped parcels and open space uh, parcels list, um, I decided not to uh, send it to the bills clerk on uh, Thursday, just because uh, I just want to make sure all the information there is accurate and make sure that Where's this list? it's on the cloud. <laughs> Point literally, it's on the cloud. But no, I, I haven't released it to uh, anyone beyond uh, a chosen few, just for out of concerns of the objectiveness and the content and parcels on the list, I just didn't want things to go beyond my control. And so I plan on giving it to you guys with it, or everyone in the next month. And I just want to make sure that some information on it is right, that some of the parcels are accurately um, noted on the uh, document before I put it into a, a map form and put it into a document for the village board to approve to restrict future liabilities should they ever happen that way in terms of a document on public record identifying a certain parcel um, just out of mere caution. So I will have something uh, more concrete next time because everyone I've showed it to has no issues with it and I think that I'm just being a little overly cautious in terms of my development in this project but that's my pace, so slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> and on that note, I'll uh, turn it over to Greg Stin. Okay, so far with the paint swap, um, it was just basically holding off on moving forward with like uh, buying supplies and that sort of thing um, until after. You know, like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So from here on in, I guess we're gonna, um, we're gonna start purchasing supplies like. Uh -huh. uh, Gloves, paint stirrers, I think. And then the A, the a frame signs. Mm -hmm. and the yeah, the signs definitely, and like signs. outreach. Um, and we also got wire signs. Like every, yeah, we had a bunch of ideas. And then the social media outreach. We do have a web or a email address. Oh, don't, and also, don't look at Snub. That would be a great idea. I. Snub's is a great idea. Um, <laughs> that's great. No, I mean, that'd be great to get people like that involved, especially the artsy crowd. Because yeah. they could definitely support that mission for the uh, little endeavor. So, uh, if you, uh, so I guess if you want to send an email out to Wendy in the mm -hmm. next month, I coordinate with her to set up the invoices to send them over to me. Um, what's on the P the spreadsheet I sent you guys uh, for the budget at the end of May are the items and the amounts that are for each one. And since you said you're doing outreach. Um, we were talking about some ideas before the meeting, um, like uh, we uh, putting a, something out on Facebook or in the newspaper, then uh, some contest or something. Yeah, maybe we could do like a like, uh, contest for designs. Or uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Where we get you know an artsy person involved, where it's a paint swap. You know, picture you know someone to put put on Main Street or something, and you know chain it to a sign or something. But it's like paint swap like this way and you know, it catches the driver off guard or makes someone notice it and then they look on Google, try to find out more about it. And when they go up on Google, they find like, Facebook post about it, something like that. Yeah. Or we
we could uh, maybe even just have or the village or the village website or something like that. Yeah, like we could have signs with like you know date, and time, location. Yeah, maybe the maybe maybe the, if there's you a know. way to do I don't know a cool like a, a, a kind of like a smaller URL of like the the paint swap information page mm -hmm. or something included on the sign okay. that would be a cool idea just so that you know people online know I mean because. I mean, the intention of this paint swap project, I mean, will it always just be for village residents? Or should we, because I mean, there's a significant artistic community. I'm sure people would drive way to ways for, you know, a full can of used oil paints or something like that, or some, you know, fancy fine art paint. And if they're just not in the village of New Paltz, I mean, that's just unfortunate. They're just restricted geographically when you know, they could be utilizing those resources. So I'm not sure what the intent was. So well, I maybe think the, since the village hall is paid for by taxpayers, payers of the people helping with the uh -huh. set up, or staff yeah. employees, we can't give away staff services or space sure. to non-village residents. Uh, okay. It's one of those deals about you. Know, okay. You know, no, I was just thinking just because uh, I would get a bigger following if we could do something like that. Or maybe hold an off-site, you know, paint shop or the paint shop not on village government property where, yeah. you know, someone donates their driveway for a few hours or something like that. An extension. Yeah. Or like you put a phone number up on Craigslist and, you know, if someone interested calls, then, you know, you can direct them into your neighbor's driveway. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll move on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I guess do all the outreach you can, I guess, you know, post me a message a week or something on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Ask or, you know, post a little poster up and snugs or, you know, mention it by word of mouth. Like, oh, well, this contest, like. Flying you know. ring. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like, theoretically, they could put their own name in the corner, you know, get their own, you know, artwork out there so that's kind of incentive for them to do it i mean would the village ever have a problem you know having an artist put their copyright in the corner and where would the art be it would just be like a sign it's like paint swap i mean it would just be placed you know on the road so that people get directed to the building here i don't think so if it was artwork and yeah. someone signed it i don't but I'd yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to, make, trying to make an incentive for people to, you know, participate in an activity like this. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay. So, on the on the buying stuff, so, if, if, does Gregson go to True Value and give them that list and say, give me a, an invoice for what this would cost, and then give it to you to give to Nancy? How does the, uh, well, how does that process work? Well, I did, well for the, for the paint swap, or for the paint swap stuff, yeah, it would be something like that. And then for PDQ, it would be like that, but we can do it online. Yeah, okay, and, and PDQ and True Value, I believe, have an account with the village. So okay, maybe just calling the treasurer and say, you know, you've approved money to buy okay. these. Here's what it costs. Would you pay them? And, uh -huh. and they'll say okay. yes, and they'll give you the stuff, and they'll pay, you know. All right, so I guess what we can do is just send that list over. Okay. Um, maybe if you want to take it, uh, I'll get, I guess I'll give you to the end of the week to add any items. In terms, or well, I'll definitely speak to Wendy because see what she we have the prices. We have like mm -hmm. we have the mo the money pooled out, but we can get different items. Yeah. But to add up to that amount. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we can change yeah. up the items if, if you guys you know find you know a paint cleaner that is totally environmentally friendly. It might be helpful to get a tin of that to keep around for the spilled paint. Right. And uh, another thing too, maybe um, can ask local businesses if it'd be all right if we put. You know, like a, a sign or something. For the record, I don't work at Snugs. Oh, sorry. But no, it's all right. But it's a great place. Oh, sorry. I thought I thought you said, said you had worked there. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. My apologies. It's a great place. My apologies. <laughs> no, no so many people go there. A few people work there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, good. always help out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I mean, was no, sorry no, 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 no. No worries. I just <laughs> on the record now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um, Ted is, uh, or actually Rachel, Rachel's next. So. Sorry, I didn't, want, I didn't mean to skip over you. Well drilling and mill preserve. Oh, um, well, uh, let me ask you a question about that, Don. Um, I had heard that uh, there were that there were there was now an alternative, and so there was no longer um, an impetus to drill there at all, or drill near there. I think the village is probably looking for a number of sites 
because no one well is going to be as big as you know what, what we would need to right. make a real dent in. So what is happening now is they're doing test drilling up by the water treatment plant on Mount Restro mm -hmm. because Mohonk has the same sort of rock structure. They know where the fissures are and there are wells there, so they're highly confident that there's we can replace the New York City water up there. Um, there's also a private landowner, and I, you know, I guess I'm not supposed to say anything specific, uh, who has land near the Millbrook Preserve that you've, had, so that you've been watching. And I think that project, the private landowner is doing their thing, and if they should find that there is a good water supply there, they'll let the village know that, and the village will be so interested in So they are still, uh, I guess, I mean, so they're still doing that. The person, that, so is it the same property owner, and they're still further. Well, it's, it's several steps in the process. Okay, then I've got to revise what. I'm, see, I thought, I I thought this wasn't. I didn't realize this was still that they were still planning to do this. I haven't seen anything it's, new there, but I feel like, you know, what happened last time shouldn't happen again. Um, and it seems like almost a you know deliberate way of skirting the decision by the village board which was not was not to drill in the Millbrook so it's like drill right next to it well, um, you know still go you know you're still affecting the aquifer and you're still drilling in you know land that's been designated by the management plan as being a uh, habitat that should be protected so I don't I, I don't I mean I thought there was this dissonance last time where apparently they didn't, they didn't uh, seem to have any realization of that um, and so I thought I, I you know I just thought oh wow this was a big mistake so what you know I, I didn't think that they were still planning to do it again well this board the environment policy board last meeting the one before came up with some recommendations on what the village should do with regard to drilling and the board started talking about that last meeting I think they're going to finish that and, and vote on some sort of standard operating procedures which are include full environmental review, seeing what sorts of other wells might be affected, um, getting a second opinion by us if it's on private land, seeing if a uh, village would hire its own hydrologist to give them a, an opinion. There's a bunch of things. No, um, I remember we yeah. went, we made a list like that, but like, so they're actually, they're actually planning to do this or is he still just gonna go ahead and just say, oh, well, he's a private owner, it's his private land, or this is a paper street, let's pull those. Is that they're going to do again, or is they, are they going to actually follow some of the set of guidelines before? Well, you I think if, it, if at any point it becomes a village project, which it's not right now, the village would follow all those steps. Right, but it's not a village project now. Right. It's, a, it's a private landowner private doing landowner. something that they can do on their land. Yeah, right. there's, no, there's no problem with that. It doesn't violate no, no, any no, law. There's a, there's a, we'll see. That's just because something doesn't violate a law doesn't mean there isn't a problem with it. I mean, there are all sorts of problems that don't immediately violate a law. But there's nothing, you know, there's I no mean, enforcement mechanism for what no we can do right now. There's no enforcement mechanism except so, that, I mean, you'd think that you would have like a more small town that would you'd be able to come to some kind of an understanding. You know, I mean, it's just, it, I, I, I didn't realize that this was still, that he was actually going to go ahead and just do it again. All right, so I, I now I, I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board with that. Well, I think the I think the next step in the process will be to do it do test wells. Yeah, and still got to right. do a bunch Even of tests. Even to do the That's test well, they're you know the last time they they, they bulldozed a big big platform. That, you know, I saw the pictures of it. To my limited understanding of that process, I don't think they would be cutting down more trees and making more roads. They'd go to the using, same using site. The site that they started working on. Oh, they'll drill more wells in the same site that they already bulldozed? No. They would take that well and see incrementally, incre go a little deeper and see how much water they cut out of it. Mm -hmm. And it kept looking promising at every step, they'd keep going. I see. But at some point and it didn't look promising. Wasn't it already 500 feet deep? I don't know off of the hand. That's what I heard. And I think okay. the, uh, yeah, so it's a question of depth and also length of the test. Yeah. Um, you, know, you test flow. for you know you test for two hours first, then eight hours, then you know and then seventy two hour. And I'm, again, I'm not. I don't want to say the wrong thing in terms of hours, but it yeah. is a step in terms right. of. What well, the, this thing is constantly this water coming out of it. I mean, it's I guess because it was. Uh, it's an artesian. It's an artesian well, so the water just. It will yeah it will always release water until it runs out. But in terms of the area it's in, and you know this. 
sub hydrological bedrock that seems to be is a, a good number of wetlands and aquifers in that area where we're talking about in the Mobile Preserve and the area beyond it, even into other more developed properties. So it's to be expected that that aquifer is, uh, you know, considerable issues. enough for at least one development for private use so there's no, nothing involved with the public sphere at this point. Well one of the issues that happened with a previous project is that they did this testing without telling anyone and it had an effect on a bunch of other wells in the area. Yeah. Um, and Seriously. that's something that you know, that I know everyone would want to present. Uh -huh. but I happen to know two people personally who have wells who are really, really close to that location. Oh, yeah. And so, huh. you know, I've, I've been checking with those folks. Oh, yeah. So I actually know them, too. Yeah, I guess that's wrong. That's just the wrong way to go about it. You know, you don't just do it and then say, oh, well, it seems to be okay. I thought we had come to some kind of, I had some kind of discussion about how it was necessary to actually test and find out, you know, what the situation is, what your pre-existing conditions are, so that when anything gets done, you know what is happening as a result of the wells that were drilled and not what the, what was previously there. You can have an accurate measurement, you can have an accurate determination of exactly what the effects are. Otherwise, because then Plains Road, then there was a whole dispute, oh well, you know, what were, your, what were the conditions like, you know, before we start drilling? Well, you don't have that for data. I think that may be, that may be why the, the whole thing is, has slowed down, because they're looking to have the village board pass those operating procedures and do the baseline tests go to the people whose wells might be affected and say, knock, knock, knock. Right, you know, exactly. That's, what, that's gonna, all we're asking. This is going to happen. Do you want to take some tests? And, right. You know, I don't think the village would do the testing, but they would say, here's what's going on. Do what you right. got to do. You know, so that, right. that will happen. Okay. Also, too, I don't know if this is related to it specifically, but I read a press release in local news that the Department of Environmental Protection is doing an info session, I think Thursday at 7 p.m., about um, you know the the water issue. Oh yeah. 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 I don't Are know. Are they doing that the, well, that's about the backup when they shut down the, when they shut down the aqueduct? Yeah. yeah, and from the press release from what I read, I don't know if anybody else read it. It seemed like it was covering some of this topic. I didn't. I didn't yeah. see that. And I read the I read the local paper every like week. That would be the wells they're talking about drilling on Plains Road. Whether they're going to do that or not. Oh, is um, it Plains Road? Are you? What we're talking about would be the village that's saying. Regardless of what they do with the aqueduct, we pay too much for New York City water. Right. We don't okay. can find water locally. You know, we want to do that long term. Yeah. And I think the, the thing on Thursday is about when they shut down the aqueduct. Do they do yeah. the road, or do they do this plant, new plan B they have? Because right. they haven't really told anybody is exactly it, what it is. And the DEP is paying for the testing, right? The uh, plain road, or no, no. The t I mean, I, I thought they were paying for the testing to find a new well to help new ponds out because they're cutting off a water supply. Yeah, there's that's that there's there's some two point nine three million dollars that's been talked yeah. about that yeah. was going to be paid to New Pulse to build the stuff in Plains Road, and the discussion is we should still get that money, but for even if Plains else. Road doesn't happen. Yeah, okay. Who paid that's, for the well at the edge of the mill road? Who paid for that? Uh, that would be the landowner. Landowner. Yeah. In the hopes that the they could be the new New York City. If they hit water, you know, we'd be buying water from them. And well, not just that; it'd also be cheaper. And I mean, I if, if if it's judged to get enough source, it, it it is theoretically sustainable. And hopefully, I mean, yes, the planning board and the village board could institute more water uh, use regulations in terms of how we use and reuse water. I think that would kind of that would be advantageous to you know put a new discourse into the way. Green Pulse addresses water policy because it's never really been an issue because we have an unlimited tap in New York City, you know, but now if we have our own local source, we ought to protect it. It's, you know, the, the, it's, the cost of New York City water has gone up over 200% in the last decade. With no way. Yeah, and it's not going to slow down. So. Well, I mean, I guess they are spending, all, I mean, DEP does a wonderful thing. I mean, I'm all, I'm all in support of their overarching goals and designations. I mean, I use their lands for trout fishing all the time, <laughs> and I love it. So, I mean, I think, yeah, they're well-intentioned, and, you know, they want to secure a water supply, so they have to put a lot of money into securing the water supply and, you know, cost of security in terms of enforcement, protection plans, management plans, 
you know, ensuring the water supply for all New York City and our water supply is not tainted costs a lot of money. So we're not the only municipality that draws off it either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. True. So well, big risk. That land that in question was originally it was annexed by the village at the request of the landowner because of the fact that there was an the water. I mean, that whole area, all of the all all of that area that's in the Melbourne Preserve was the annexed village. by the village be, for that reason. So they could, so they could go on so that they could go on municipal water. So I mean, hmm. now they're going back well, and drilling the there. Interesting developments. We'll just have to uh, play it by ear. Across the water. But uh, does anyone uh, plan on attending that info session? I do, yeah. Okay. So I guess can you report back on that next sure. month? That'd be great. And if any of uh, anyone else goes. No, no, no. All right. So let's move things along. No, so nice. here you go. Information. Thank you, Alex. Okay. So I, I, I guess I guess for the record we ha we have. Uh, it's called the DEP Backup Water Public Scoping Meeting. It's uh, June 29th at 7 p.m. at the Community Center. Um, this is basically to uh, present the draft scope for the uh, State Environmental Impact Statement. Um, written comments are accepted until Tuesday, July 11th, 2017. And you can send that to wffcomments at dep.nyc. Dot gov. And uh, I hope that the EPB uh, is able to put something together for that in terms of a, a one page document. We can all contribute to it. We can all have our own paragraphs or whatever in terms of our membership comments. But I think it would just be a good gesture for the EPB to send something yeah. to the DEP. And it would be before our next meeting, so you can do it by email. We need to do it by email. Yeah. yeah. Also, you can have a meeting by email, but you can express your opinion by email. That's the exactly. If, if you want the information, because I know you want to write something. So I guess maybe if you if you want to write something, you get a draft out and you can pass it around, or we can just add to it. But we, I just want to, you know, I do have some stuff to say about it. I'm sure Kristen does and will yeah, after absolutely. this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think Ted and Eden would definitely have something to say. I mean, they live right off Mill Rock Road or somewhere up North Manhattan, something like that. I mean, they're just outside the village boundary, but you know, they're researchers and they're gonna be approximately impacted by this, so. On that note, with Ted and Eden, they are out of uh, our meeting today, and unfortunately, Ted had a pre-arranged business uh, meeting, whereas Eden, unfortunately, had to get called into work, and as well as uh, having some collegiate um, examinations tomorrow. But on that note, Ted sent me some prepared remarks for me to say on the record on his behalf. If you're watching Ted, <laughs> if not, you'll catch us later. But uh, he had some words about the uh, trash contract and the sanitary sewer capacity. Uh, those are two things that he's been working on with uh, his daughter Eden. So here we go. So with regards to the trash contract, and all right, so quote unquote, or quote, <laughs> I have discussed this effort currently being led by Dennis Young, trustee. I am up to speed on his approach and his effort to work with the attorney and other stakeholders to create a consolidated refuse trash process for the New Paltz community. My effort will be to conduct and present an environmental benefits study to articulate the carbon footprint, road wear and tear, and other environmental benefits for such an approach. We will designate and monitor the current practice of multiple trash vendors on selected streets in the New Paltz areas and extrapolate those results on uh, community-wide. Then we will conduct calculations and comparisons of the fuel use and the vehicle miles traveled using industry standards. We will present conclusions for the study that we anticipate will be helpful to build the support and buy-in for Trustee Young's efforts. We anticipate the report will be completed within two months and be presented to the Environmental Policy Board. With regards to his other project, sanitary sewer capacity, I've reached out to Mayor Rogers, smoked with him about this and reviewed many of the documents that are available on the internet. 
I will soon tour the wastewater treatment facilities and meet with the contracted operator for the sewage plant as well as village staff. In addition, we will review the current discharge permit, uh, New York State DEC consent order, and the monthly reports for 2016 and, 27, uh, and so far in 2017. My goal is to go through this review of available sewer information to prepare a report and conclusions regarding the available sanitary sewer capacity in and around New Paltz. This reporting will be available for us at the EPB to review and discuss. I would anticipate this report will be completed within three months and presented to the Environmental Policy Board. Please let me know any comments or concerns, and that's about it. Basically, uh, those are two projects Ted is working on, so quote now, <laughs> unquote. And uh, yeah, I basically think that he is a very solid member. He's definitely been able to uh, kick us and help us kick into gear as uh, I've assumed chairmanship and move things along as a coherent organization and do pragmatic projects that are visible within the community and working with different stakeholders. So I think all our projects are finally getting to that point in terms of branching out, involving other parties, community members. I mean, for me, I've been involved with the planning board, the village board, the mayor's office, the EPB here, and the village planner. And Brixton's been working with uh, people outside the community, like Wendy or researchers, uh, the mayor's office, the village board, and the Department of Public Works, right? Did did sure did, yes. did yeah. that blue uh, when tool? when he's gone and yeah, yeah blue tool nice, nice stuff okay nice well I think that'd be I don't know man, good for us to reach out about that because our, our signage because they could lock up the signs I'm sure they have a few lots somewhere in the garage where some people don't steal their paint swap signs you know start off on the right foot with uh, community outreach so yeah I guess um, we got a projects going on so paint swap scheduling I mean. Are you, so I guess scheduling is a bit difficult when you don't have the uh, signs and stuff, but. Right. I think as of right now, it's still Wednesdays. Wednesdays? Any weekend days? Uh, I'm not sure exactly yet. Okay. Again, a lot of this I have to go over with uh, Wendy. <laughs> Tell her we have resources at our, at our hands now, so uh, we could definitely do something with it, expand it, or add incentive for uh, an expansion of the paint swap. But maybe even uh, reach out to the New Paul's Reuse Center and see what they uh, think about, you know, partnering up or maybe supporting the cause of the paint swap on behalf of the Environmental Policy Board outside village confines, just to help out the bigger community. And because, I don't know, it feels beneficial to get as many people to these things as possible to have the biggest impact. So and just as an FYI, I know Wendy approached the recycling center before she came to the village board and the recycling center had <coughs> too many other things going on to want to get involved with this. So, uh -huh. so that's already been asked and answered unfortunately. Okay. <coughs> um, in terms of uh, my project, I mean as I said earlier I just want to get the parcel, I mean, I had all the parcels and all the information there, and I just want to make sure it's accurate, so uh, by next meeting I'm going to have that map and the list uh, finalized, I guess. Uh, well, at least a draft of the list, or a reduced version of the list from what it is in the present form, because some of the information I will have to verify. Uh, through actually like seeking documentation from the village. And, but other than that, that's my uh, status. I guess Rachel, I, with, I mean, you're, are you still doing Millbrook, uh, the, the uh, rural environmental area stuff, or what, what's your project right now? Um, are you still looking for a project? Well, would you like to gather like the project? To, yeah. Perhaps? Well, I'm going to call uh, the Riverkeeper river keeper for, for next week. I'm going to call Riverkeeper for next week and figure out how, how best to uh, utilize whatever time we've purchased from them in order to uh, improve what we're doing. Um, 
Yeah. 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 I'd like to sit down with you at some point for 15 minutes for the next meeting and we can bang out language on critical environmental areas. Sure. Okay. We can, we can just, we can do. Yeah. Um, and then bring a recommendation I mean, you board. saw what I had written before. Yeah, I, I saw that. The idea of, I mean, it's, just, it's a good it's just a, Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, we can do it a cheap shot, but at the same time, I mean. Well, this is, this is um, from the DEC. This is what we want. Yeah. We want pre-application meetings. That's what we want. We want to be involved in the conceptual stage. If you go to any type of educative, educational planning session on how to make your environmental policy board or whatever mission more effective, that is the number one thing that they recommend, is to set up, and this is something that you can really only get if the planning board and or the village board are actually interested in that happening, which a lot of times they'll, you know, they'll give lip service, but then when it comes down I mean, to it, I think it doesn't happen. I think that, that works well with, in conjunction with my project too. It's exactly works well with that. But that's that. If you look at I mean, what, kind of the, what the steps were for the developing, you know, for critical environmental areas, that was one of the very first things that, that they uh, recommend doing is you know, looking at trying, looking at, at, at parcels that are, are potentially developable uh -huh. and setting out the pre-existing conditions of the property before. The developer goes ahead. Yeah, I mean that's what exactly what I what I so endeavored is, to do. This is absolutely straight yeah. out of the DEC website. Yeah, what I mean. Supposed to be doing. This is what we do. I mean, I mean that I mean that's an informal pre-application meeting. That's exactly what exactly. I've been asking for for the past few months, and we've gotten that. We've got, just got the opportunity to hear out a potential pit parcel project before it's even proposed. So I think that I mean the right. inherent so, need for that has developed and been responded to so I think that I think your point is very appropriate and but I don't know if there's necessarily a huge further step that we have to do because we're already getting roped in on things a lot earlier than we ever have so I think it's like a work in progress something like that well but if there was a formal process to do better we, the uh, the amphitheater project at Water Street that I, we just totally missed that okay yeah, we weren't even yeah and that's a shame on us. I'm not, yeah. not pointing fingers, you know. Uh -huh. I, I just, you know, it's done. And, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, just, I, I'm just thinking of all, like, but I don't know if there's any, I mean, way to formalize that uh, unless, you know, amend the Environmental Policy Board law. Well, but but that, that, that's a little bit different than critical environmental areas. That's like any pre-application process. So unless you want to, but, and also, I'm very touchy on using the term critical environmental areas because the legal definition is very much different than the way we're using it in this room. Okay. Well, I mean, I... I in, within Seeker and website. the definition of critical environmental areas and within NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act, Impact, or Policy Act, the definition of critical environmental areas, is very, it's very rigid and onerous on the part of Proving that and establishing the fact that they're critical environmental areas, and we can—I mean, we can use language like that. I just—it's a very—it's already an entrenched term, or we maybe we can create our own wording for it, like protected use or something like that, where it would allow, or we would have language saying that we designate this area as having a certain uses, but say for recreational purposes or a certain. Low scale build out. Use of the area. When you're when you're talking about a critical environmental area, that's not what it's about. It's about the the resources, the natural resources that are there already, and what sorts of biodiversity depend on those natural resources. I mean, I'm I'm all appreciative of natural resources, but I I going by my I mean, I went to school. I took hours and hours of environmental policy. Just in finding it legally. My, no, my, no, my, my understanding of critical environmental areas is that New Pulse does not actually have any. That's my so, understanding. So we call them most highly valued. I yes. I totally disagree with you like, on that one. Totally. Just, just in, a, in a wider sense, I mean, we have these areas that should be protected, like Melville Preserve, and may, that would be the only area where I would co constitute it as a critical right. environmental area exactly. in the least bit. However, by the Walco River, that's not a critical environmental area because the, the no, water is no, already no, damaged. That's and it. That's what we have. That's I mean that. It. I mean, but the whole thing shouldn't be for the environmental area. It should only be. No. All right. Sorry. No. So, sorry about that. No, I was just. I was just making light. I was asking about to keep you up with it. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's. 
I, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm very apprehensive at using that term, that's all. So if you think and define the language and show it to us, I mean, by all means. Sure. And both we'll we, yeah, we. Page again, and, uh, I mean. It's also, it ha you know, I mean, and the, the page is from the Millbrook plan. No, I understand. The, the Millbrook plan is a non-binding -bind document. It's a plan. It's okay. I mean, this is probably the enforceability of all these ideas is the limitation. You're speaking in legal terms. You're speaking in, in layperson terms. We well, can figure it's, this not out. Even, it's not even so much that. It's that uh, <laughs> the way things actually go down uh, had, does have to do not with, has to do with, with perception and, you know, what the, the community values, what it is, the, the, you know, these are sort of like abstract things. I mean, secret, sure. It, it, a lot of the the types of things that they that they measure as valuable and the way that these things are deemed valuable is somewhat subjective. It is somewhat um, you know based on community values. And I feel like you know sure um, in the strict <coughs> sense you may or may not be able to prove something one way or the other. You may have a different result depending on who you're trying to prove it to. So I mean. It's not. It's not so much that you know. Also, uh, you know, like I said, like I said before, like um, a lot of the development that uh, ended up getting curtailed or restricted and resulted in, in the protection of land for the project was done so <coughs> because there was a perception and an expectation that a wetlands law would be passed, even though that law was not actually passed. It was the expectation that it would be passed, which actually restrained the developers. From, from violating the community and, and these things taken under consideration in the, in the planning process. But I think if you and I sit down, we can hammer out language that will even satisfy them. Absolutely. We could put, call them areas of, areas of critical environmental importance. No, I you can say, you know, well, yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah. I'm just trying to look I, at the, the is, most strict legal lens. It's not that right. I don't think there's areas that are not of value, of great value, yeah. it's that in the eyes of enforceability and stopping projects that shouldn't be there, there's lacking substance in what we're trying to prove. And uh, well, okay. so we'll try there, something well, I mean, are, 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 you, are you willing to spend five thousand dollars to you know do a full engineering analysis of the hydrogeological uh, impact because that's part of the designation system that. The state has well, in terms of for this, for this, the, the environmental all these hydrological maps and everything already been done. No, I, I, then I mean, I mean, I'm just you know I'm pulling out a random statistic, but what I'm just trying to say is it's just very onerous. Yeah, you they're very detailed. That's no, I they're I mean this is a I know I've I've read through the whole water treatment. I use data like from that in my college projects, and I'm just you know from a legalistic point of view. I see issues with, but I think that getting using language like that to get in the pre-application process would be viable, but it wouldn't stop development. It would not inhibit anything, but it, I think if it gets us involved, yeah, by all means. Well, and I just need to state for the record that it is not the goal of the Environmental Policy Board to stop development. No, 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 all right. It's, it's not. It's, hey, I, 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 I got a lot of clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I think I made that, I've made that clear over the past few months. I've made that clear. It's to control and, and have responsible development yeah, and make sure exactly. environmentally it's conscious development. It's to cluster it out of the habitat. That's what we're doing. Okay. That's what All of those things. Yeah. I'm trying to cluster I mean, I, mean, I, I think that, uh, we're, we're doing that. We're getting involved in the pre-application process. I mean, I'm all for projects that are smart for the community, so I mean, so maybe that can be your goal to come Drive to work with me to have the village create a pre-application process for critical areas. It says here there's the other towns that already have them. All right, we got a template. Town of Phillipstown. We got a template. Uh, All right, great. Requires a pre-application meeting. So on that note, it sounds like we have a great plan for ne uh, next meeting to get some language there. Yes, but I think I think that's a great idea. I mean. We'll definitely, you know, tread lightly, but I think that you guys definitely have the right idea, and by all means, we got to uh, steer direct development where we need it to be, and keep it out of areas where we, they need protection. So, on that note, we got our projects lined up for next month. I got my uh, list and my map. Rachel's got 
Paul Riverkeeper and uh, work with Don on that language, Absolutely. and Grinston's got the uh, budget with Wendy and the paint swap stuff and the contest. And once you guys sort out what items you want, send it over to me, and we'll all forward it on to the build treasurer. So on that note, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Thank you for texting me. Well, Take you care. see how that works. It's five minutes. <laughs> Got the text, five minutes. I'm here. It's just, just real life. Oh, take care, Rachel. Have a good one. Yeah, no I look forward to seeing what you have drafted there. Just because, I mean, it's such a deep issue that I've had to spend hours doing like projects on them. I, 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 I used to.